Okay, here we have one C-grade Hakeem from Royal Tiger Imports wrapped in bubble wrap. With no further ado, let's cut it open. The Hakeem has been a dream rifle of mine basically since I found out that it exists. Um, I think these things are really cool because they are one, one of the more affordable 8mm Mauser options on the market. Two, they just have a very interesting manual of arms as well as, one second, I got one more piece of tape here. They have a very interesting manual of arms as well as design. And three, how often do you get to have a rifle out of Egypt? They are cool rifles. Okay. Look at that right there. Wow. Okay. There's definitely a stock issue right here. As you can see, there's some some cracks or I guess gouges would maybe be more accurate for that. There is a gouge on the stock right here. So let's go over this thing visually or physically. Do these normally have a longer stock than this? Give me one moment. Hello everyone, I am 8mm Mauser Man. I'm coming at you right now because there are a few mistakes I made in this video, so I wanted to talk, talk first about two of them. One, a few times in this video you will see me make reference to the fact that Royal Tiger Imports did not tell me that the stock was going to be shorter. Well, they did, I just missed it when I read the post. And you will also hear me reference that the pictures did not show store shorter stocks. Well, I did notice this in the post the first time I saw it when I bought the gun. However, I did not go back and reread the post right before doing the unboxing and it had just left my mind. But the pictures in the post were not of the gun that you would receive or really any of the guns that anyone would receive. They were pictures of a good condition Hakeem. And they clearly, clearly said that that was an oversight on my part as I was filming this. So if you see reference to that, that is why. Okay, there's some copper wire wrapped around the real rear sling here. Here's the front sling. They did say that a magazine would be missing. So let's look at the rest of the condition of this visually. The muzzle device is all there. It looks like they actually import marked the muzzle device. So I, I do like that. That is a very inconspicuous import mark um, versus some people who put the import marks in a really irritating and obvious place. Okay, so it says Hakim 7.9 millimeter made in Egypt. And then there is, I think they have to put the serial number right here. Um, in addition to the uh, import mark, they need to have a serial number on the receiver. I think that's an import rule. And then there is 17752 uh, right there and 17752 on the stock. Although that might have very well been done by the Ethiopians that it came from rather than RTI. Okay, we're just gonna do a function check test and see how this thing works. That is hard to do. Oh, okay, it does. That is hard to do when it's not in your shoulder. But the way that these work is you push the dust cover closed and then you open it up and then it's supposed to spring forward like that, the bolt does and then the bolt locks into place. And then if you put the safety on, same thing, but the bolt is not supposed to go forward. Safety off, forward again. The cut down stock is a problem. The uh, rear sight doesn't have the leaf spring in there. The front sight appears to be in place okay. And so far, other than the, um, the magazine issue, like we talked about, and the, um, handguard issue, everything else appears to be in working order. There is a crack along the stock right here and right here. But again, they said the stocks would be in rough shape. Making sure there's not a round in there, let's check the safety function real quick. So safety is on in this position and doesn't fire. Let's take the safety off and it should fire. All right, well, let's take the stock off and see how it looks under the wood, see if there's any other missing parts that I'm not aware of and those types of things. Okay, gas block is still there. All right, I've got to say thank you to Milserp Mike and Marshall Zukov for this one. So I need to send this forward, move this back to the middle position, and that pulls out, and then I can just gently let this ride back like that. 
We got a, gu a guide rod and a couple of springs there. And then send the bolt back, the bolt carrier group and the bolt itself. I don't know exactly how to, there you go. That's how you get that out. Cool. All right. Looks like the firing pin is in there and in working order. Actually, these internal parts appear to be in pretty darn good shape. Um, the extractor there looks all right. Plungers and everything look all right. The springs, those look all right. And the bolt carrier also looks pretty great. I got the stock taken off, so let's look at its condition first, and then we'll look at some of the metal parts. You can tell that there is a crack running along right here, as well as two separate gouges right there. Turn it around. There is that 17752 serial number sharpied on. And I have not received any other guns from Royal Tiger Imports that had anything like that. Uh, so I don't think that this is necessarily an issue with Royal Tiger Imports writing in all their stocks. I don't know exactly when that happened. Okay. As we go down this, you can see there's a little dents right there and dents on the side of this right here. There is a big gouge right there that is big on the stock and other little dents and gouges in it. Okay. Right here, there are two very large cracks running alongside that side of the stock. There are also some smaller ones right here on the back, on the pistol grip, and then up here on the top as well. So there are some pretty sizable uh, cracks on the stock, and that does make me a little bit worried about its integrity, but none of them appear to be um, growing or anything like that. I do have a friend who has some, I think it's called Acker Glass. Um, oh, look, there's another one right there too. So I may have him come and touch this up and help me out with it, but I... I'm not too concerned about that. I'm not necessarily expecting this gun to win any beauty contests. It is a shooter for me. On the upper hand guard, we do have gouges. We have a large crack right there. Um, yeah, this, this gun has definitely been well loved. Showing you the metal components under the stock too. There is a little bit of surface rust, um, but I've pretty well cleaned it off. I actually haven't cleaned the, the barrel yet. I've cleaned all the other components, just the the barrel I haven't done yet. Um, but the barrel under the stock still has pretty good finish on it. And this area right here also has pretty good finish on it. There are some signs of former slight surface rust, but uh, really it's not that bad. Now this was filthy. I did end up cleaning it before I filmed this segment, but you can see that it cleaned up pretty nice. There's not any pitting or major rust issues on it. And so... I would say that as far as function goes, this gun should work pretty well. Ooh, sometimes when you run a um, patch through a gun, you can feel all of the crust, and this is one of such situations. Okay, so for a couple minutes there, I was a little bit worried that this Hakeem might be a smooth bore uh, with just how much it's been shot. However, upon not just, just running patches down the bore, really, not even really cleaning it, um, I can see that there is still rifling, which is encouraging. It is, it is definitely uh, not a top-grade barrel, but it should still be able to stabilize your projectile and fire said projectile downrange at a target, which is what I am looking to do with this rifle because it's a rifle. Okay, so real quick, let's go over what I am happy about and what I am not happy about. I'll do unhappy first. Um, number one, I really wish they would have told me that the stock was cut down. I might have bought it anyway because I've been wanting a Hakeem for a while and this is probably the cheapest Hakeem on the market, but uh, that is a pretty big thing. I remember seeing on the listing that they might have gouges in the stock, that there might be cracks in it, and there's those things too, but that's kind of to be expected with C grades from Royal Tiger Imports. However, I do not remember even seeing any pictures where the stock was cut down. So that's kind of disappointing. Um, the good news is everything still locks up okay and everything still looks okay in that regard. The other thing I'm unhappy about is the bore. The bore is, um, I mean, they, they said the bore might be in poor condition and I can still see rifling, but the bore is definitely experiencing some 
issues. I'm not quite sure how it will shoot, but I'll definitely test that for you guys once I have the chance to do so. I'll be releasing this video early though, and I don't have a magazine yet. I also don't have the, the proper key to make sure the gas system is in or in the right place. So I wanna do those things first before I try and shoot it. All right, so I think that's everything I'm unhappy about. Obviously I wish it was in better condition, but it was a C grade from Royal Tiger Imports and it's the cheapest Takim I could find. Okay, things I am happy about. Uh, when I had the action apart, I was really happy with the quality and the uh, condition of these parts. That all looks pretty good. There's maybe a little bit of surface rust on it at most, but that'll clean up real nice. Same thing with the bolt and bolt carrier. Uh, I was kind of worried buying something like this that I would get in, it just wouldn't be safe to shoot. Um, but the bolt and bolt carrier are in absolutely great shape. So I'm really happy with that. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. I recently got these really awesome. I subscribed to 8mm Mauser Man, but I lived on stickers. And I am really excited to sell them to you guys for $4. If you would like one, I will leave a Venmo link in the description so you can go there and buy one of these. Send me $4, include your address in the details, and I will send you a sticker. I am 8mm Mauser Man, and I finally purchased a semi-automatic 8mm Mauser rifle, but I lived on. Which proves it's hard to get the best of a man named John. Big John. Big John.